Ever been told to play hard to get? Or that you should change yourself to be more appealing? Or that men are intimidated by successful women? How much truth is there really in such statements? This is the question we will be answering in this video. Welcome to our channel. Join us on a journey to your happier self. Today, we're delving into a topic that's riddled with misconceptions and myths, the world of dating advice for women. We're going to break down and debunk some of the most common yet harmful tips you've probably heard before. If you've heard any of these tips before, stick around because we're about to debunk some of the most common dating advice for women. So let's get straight to the point and answer the question. What are the most common dating tips and advice for women you should never listen to? Number five, play hard to get. The notion behind this advice is to create a lure, making you more attractive by maintaining mystery and unavailability. But here's the catch. It's a game and it's not a foundation for genuine connection. This tip is misleading because it advocates for a form of manipulation, which can lead to miscommunication in a relationship. Let's say you're interested in someone, but you're playing hard to get. They might interpret your actions as disinterest and move on, leaving you wondering what went wrong. Moreover, it's important to remember that a successful relationship is built on honesty, not games. It's about being true to yourself and expressing your feelings openly. We're not saying you should wear your heart on your sleeve from day one, but there's a difference between being cautious and being misleading. Playing hard to get also implies that you're not enough as you are, that you need to put on a show to be desirable. But guess what? You are enough, just as you are. Your worth isn't defined by how well you can play a game, but by your authenticity. So instead of playing games, strive for clarity and honesty in your interactions. Be open about your feelings and intentions. After all, the right person will appreciate you for who you truly are, not for how well you can pretend to be someone else. Number four, you need to change yourself to be more appealing. Now, let's get this straight. There's a vast difference between self-improvement and self-alteration. Self-improvement is about growing, maturing, and becoming the best version of yourself, while self-alteration is about changing your fundamental traits, values, or interests to fit another person's ideal. It's crucial to understand that the foundation of any relationship should be authenticity. Imagine building a house on a shaky foundation. It might look beautiful from the outside, but eventually it will crumble because it wasn't built on solid ground. The same goes for a relationship built on pretense. It might seem perfect initially, but it won't withstand the test of time because it wasn't built on truth. When you change yourself to please others, you're not only betraying yourself, but you're also setting up an unfulfilled relationship. You see, when you alter your identity to match someone else's expectations, you're essentially living a lie. You're not being true to yourself, and that's not fair to you or your partner. Moreover, changing yourself for someone else can lead to unhappiness. You might think that if you change, he'll love you more, but that's not how love works. Love is about acceptance, understanding, and respect. It's about loving someone for their quirks, their flaws, and their uniqueness. It's not about molding someone into your ideal partner. Now, I'm not saying that you should never change. As humans, we're constantly evolving, and change is an integral part of that process. But when you change, it should be for you, not for someone else. It should be because you want to grow, not because you want to please. It should be a choice, not a compromise. So next time you catch yourself thinking that you need to change to be more appealing, remember this, you are enough just as you are. You are unique, you are special, and you are deserving of love. Remember, the right person will love you for who you are, not who they want you to be. Number three, wait for him to make the first move. Some of you might be thinking, why should I make the first move? Isn't that the man's job? The truth is, we live in the 21st century, and the idea that only men should initiate relationships firmly belongs in the past. Being proactive in a relationship is crucial, and taking the initiative doesn't mean you're desperate or overbearing. It means you're confident and know what you want. It's about expressing your feelings and showing interest in someone. And there's nothing more attractive than someone who's confident and isn't afraid to go after what they want. 
Now, this doesn't mean you should chase someone who's clearly not interested. It's about making your intentions known, setting the pace, and showing you're interested. It's about taking control of your romantic life and not leaving it up to chance or someone else's whim. It's okay to make the first move, to text him first, to ask him out on a date. It's okay to be the one who says, I love you first. It's okay to be the one who fights for the relationship when things get tough. Remember, love is not a spectator sport. It requires active participation from both parties. So don't be afraid to step up and take charge. In the game of love, there's no room for passive players. And before we reveal how the two most dangerous dating tips and advice for women that you should never listen to, if you've enjoyed this video so far, show us your support by giving us a thumbs up, hitting that subscribe button, and don't forget the bell. Your support tells us that we're providing valuable insights to you, inspiring us to produce more content that will improve not only your love life, but also that of other viewers. Number two, men are intimidated by successful women. This age-old stereotype has been doing rounds for years, painting a picture that's not just harmful, but also downright untrue. It's time we debunk this fallacy and set the record straight. And let's start by understanding why this stereotype is harmful. It's harmful because it perpetuates the notion that a woman's success could potentially be a roadblock in her pursuit of a meaningful relationship. It implies that in order for a woman to be desirable to a man, she must dim her light, underplay her achievements, and essentially be less than she is. This is not just unfair, but it also undermines the very essence of equality and mutual respect that should form the foundation of any relationship. Now, let's talk about why this stereotype is untrue. We live in a world where women are leading nations, running businesses, and breaking glass ceilings in every field imaginable. And guess what? Many of these successful women are in happy, fulfilling relationships. So let's put this fallacy to bed once and for all. You don't need to downplay your success or achievements to attract a partner. Because the truth is, the right partner will not be intimidated by your success. Instead, they will admire, respect, and draw inspiration from it. They will see your success not as a threat, but as a testament to your strength, determination, and resilience. Success doesn't intimidate the right partner, it inspires them. So go out there, be successful, and let your light shine. The right partner will love you for it. Number one, love will find you when you stop looking. This is a piece of advice that can leave you waiting indefinitely. While it may sound romantic and spontaneous, it's not always practical in the real world. Now, it's crucial to understand that this doesn't mean becoming obsessed with finding a partner. It's not about frantically searching or desperately clinging to anyone who shows the slightest interest. It's about being open and receptive, putting yourself in situations where you can meet new people, and being proactive in nurturing connections that feel right. It's about understanding that love isn't some form of magic that just happens to you. It's a journey an experience that you actively participate in. It's about recognizing that you have control over your love life and that you are capable of steering it in the direction you want. So, instead of just waiting for love to find you, why not take the reins and seek it out? Engage with the world, open your heart, and let your actions guide you towards the love that you deserve. You can't win the lottery if you don't buy a ticket, right? So there you have it. While well-intentioned, some dating advice can do more harm than good. Every piece of advice we've dissected today had one common flaw, the suggestion to be someone other than your genuine self. Always remember, the best relationship advice is to be true to yourself, communicate openly, and don't be afraid to take the lead. And if you found this video inspiring, then you may also want to discover the surprising traits of a high-value woman. Check out this video where we reveal all there is to know about this. Thanks for watching. See you next time.